let's get scratching. <laughs> Everybody, Jim here, and I'm coming to you today from the neighborhood of Oizumi Gakuen here in Tokyo. Uh, I'm here today to go on a game hunting run. There's a nice big hard off not too far from here, maybe like a 15 20 minute walk, and uh, it's really overcast today. Uh, I'm hoping I don't get rained on. Uh, I might though, I unfortunately did not bring an umbrella today. Should have checked the forecast. Um, so we're gonna go for a walk, we're gonna go hunt for some games, but first, uh, there's something very cool about Oizumi Gakuen that I wanna show you, so let's go check that out. This is the Oizumi Anime Gate, as it says, the Japan Animation Birthplace. Uh, so here it is, the Anime Gate, the gate to the world of Japanese anime, uh, with lots of cool bronze statues of classic anime characters and a history lesson, sort of, of Toei Animation properties. This is here because there's actually, I think the original Toei Animation Studio is only a short walk from here, and there's even like a museum there that you can go and check it out, but this is sort of like recognized as the home of uh, the original uh, birth of Japanese anime, Toei Animation, stuff like Astro Boy and uh, old Osamu Tezuka stuff, White Lion, things like that. Uh, it all started right here, and a bunch of your favorites like Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon and uh, all that stuff was animated here in Oizumi. So uh, if you're in the neighborhood, um, more than just like a good spot to go game hunting, um, this is like kind of a historic place for anime fans. So if you're here in town, uh, go to the animation studio, check out their uh, museum, and uh, get a little bit of a history lesson, a little bit of nostalgia for us old school anime fans. Uh, it's very cool. Anyway, uh, enough of this. Uh, let's hit the road. Let's go for a nice walk and let's go hunt for some video games. Should be fun. Let's do it. Here we are, hard off, off house, combination. Uh, pretty cool, I haven't been here in a few years, so I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure the last time I was here I got a ton of games. So I'm hoping it's still as well stocked as it was back then. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the little walk over here, nice and leisurely stroll. Took about 20 minutes from Oizumi Gakuen Station, so not too much of a walk. Uh, but let's get inside, let's dig around through their retro game stash and hopefully come away with a whole lot of games. Let's do it. Challenge, exciting, power, and love. Chouten ni tatsu gakkou a doko ga Downtown Nekketsu Koushin Chok Tore Yuke Dai Undo Kai Tecmos All right. Getting started in this uh, lovely hard off with some consoles. They had quite a few. And they're priced pretty good, as you can see here. And... Uh, they have marked on the price tag here. They actually had a three-month warranty on these, so that's that's pretty awesome. As we take a look at a 9,900 yen PC Engine deck, so that was greatly overpriced. But the uh, the Saturn, the Dreamcast, that's all about right. As is this boxed AV Famicom. Even got a Famicom Mini back there. Some Super Famicoms and N64s. Uh, yeah, warranties in a used uh, goods store like this where stuff is like, you know, 20, 30 years old. 
Uh, that's not so common, but that's greatly appreciated as we look at a lot of Famicom games here. Uh, starting with Macross. I'm going to set that aside. We'll put that in our basket because I did set myself a nice little basket aside, which we will fill up over the course of the video. And Gradius for 500 yen with the exchange rate right now. That's fantastic. That's like $4 or less than $4 actually. Uh, so yeah, $4 Gradius, I'll take it. And then we've got Sailor Moon R, and I'm just like stacking stuff up at this point. Uh, we've got some Mickey Mouse, we've got Yu Yu Hakusho, we've got The Great Battle 4. That's a great game for a thousand yen. I'll take that, that's like maybe $7, if that. Puyo Puyo 2 Remix, thank you very much. Uh, all these loose carts are... Uh, Pretty reasonably priced, and as I found out later, I took them out of the wrapper. Very clean, which was surprising. Rockman X2, that goes home with me. As does uh, Super Bomberman 3. And I think I did end up picking up another Super Bomberman game. Uh, there are a ton of Bomberman games on the Super Famicom that were not released for the SNES. So always uh, like to pick those up when I can. East 2. For those of you familiar with East 1 and 2 on the Turbo Graphics and PC Engine, there were Famicom ports made as well, and they're also pretty good. Uh, those soundtracks especially sound uh, really nice coming through a uh, Famicom sound chick. Oh, uh, we sound chick. We've even got some uh, nice N64 games here, like some Gambare Goemon, some Banjo Tooie, which they call Banjo Kazooie Daiboken 2, and some Diddy Kong Racing, which. Uh, is an old favorite of mine. I don't know, I was part of that, that camp that liked Diddy Kong Racing uh, more than Mario Kart 64. So if you're with me on that one, let me know. We've got all these PS2, PS3, so much of this stuff here. Uh, they had way more of this than the, um, you know, the 8-bit and 16-bit stuff. Here we're looking at racing games like Le Mans, Burnout. Am I saying it right? Le Mans or is it Le Mans? I don't know. You tell me. Um, but I like that they, they broke these up by genre. So this says action. So this is the action genre. So you'll dig through here for a bunch of action games. And we've got some Armored Core, which is always a good time. Argos no Senshi, or something, whatever it's called. Uh, what is that? That's uh, some, some game back in the day. I think Rygar. Uh, but there's Kamen Rider. We've got Kinikuman. Uh, those are like 500 yen, so they have a ton of these PS2 games. Most of them are pretty cheap. And I am going to zoom in right here, the uh, fighting section. So these are all fighting games. Uh, for 2,000 yen, we've got SVC Chaos. We've got the Vampire uh, Collection. I guess it's like the Vampire Chronicle Collection, but it's got basically all the games you could get on the, uh, the Switch Capcom fighting bundle recently they're all in there as well as Marvel vs. Capcom 2 this one that went straight into the basket Gekka no Kenshi 1 and 2 aka uh, the last blade games those are excellent underappreciated Neo Geo fighters and we have an assortment of Guilty Gear fighters here including Guilty Gear Isuka Guilty Gear XX Accent Core all that stuff those all ended up going into the basket too as well as some Saint Seiya there's a couple of those, and they're pretty fun. Highly cinematic fighting games. Uh, some Hajime no Ippo, aka, I think, Victorious Boxers. And, of course, some Dragon Ball Z. Wouldn't be a complete game hunting video without some DBZ thrown in there. And uh, we come down a little further here to a modest little selection of PS1 games, as well as, like, some Saturn and Dreamcast and things like that, so... Uh, all the jewel case stuff down here again not quite as abundant as I remember it being from a few years ago but Samurai Spirits for 500 yen that's another one that ended up going home with me and uh, what else we have some Super Robot Tyson those are fun and uh, this here I believe this is Shiritsu Justice Gakuen but essentially it's it's uh, Rival Schools 2 or kind of like Rival Schools 1.5 there, you know, it's the between the original and the Project Justice that was not released outside of Japan. Uh, Mr. Domino, that's fun as well. And as you can see, I left Rival Schools kind of like peeking out because I wanted to make sure I came back for that one. Uh, Rockman 5, Complete Works. All of the Complete Works games are great. They basically, they released all of the original six 
Rockman games on the PlayStation with uh, all kinds of bonuses and remix soundtracks and cool stuff like that, which I believe they bundled them all together eventually uh, for a GameCube release. And Sakura Tyson to Hanagumi Tyson, aka Sakura Wars, and Shinmu for 500 yen. And it comes with the Shinmu Jute Box, which is a soundtrack a CD with all the music from all of the bars and uh, other various uh, little night spots in the game. So that's very cool. Rockman X4. Somewhere at like 3,000 yen. So like 20, I don't know, like 24 bucks for Rockman X4. And we've even got some 3DO games. We've got like four 3DO games. I don't come across these uh, very much. Burning Soldier. Okay. Like I had a 3DO at one point with like 20 some odd games for it. Most of them garbage. But, um, you know, still sometimes kind of entertaining to just see what the hell they got on there. And we have some cases here, the dreaded cases, some more expensive games, like they've got Time Gal, they've got X-Men vs. Street Fighter, some other cool stuff in here, Code Veronica for some reason, maybe it's like factory sealed, and Koro Koro Postonin for like 200 bucks, that's a great game by the way, um, but it is one of the uh, more expensive PS1 games, and uh, to wrap things up, they had a whole bunch of boxed Game Boy and GBA and other stuff just hanging on like a, an end cap here, I believe that's what they're, they're called, if I recall back from my retail working days, an end cap. Um, so they got all this stuff here, including some GameCube games, which are nice, I don't know why those are particularly expensive, and a lovely boxed copy of Rockman 5 on the Famicom, my favorite of the bunch by the way, and some loose copies of Gradius 2, which is a little up there. They've got it priced at uh, over 2,000 yen. And Sparkster, sequel to Rocket Knight Adventures, if I'm not mistaken. And even the little-known JoJo's Bizarre Adventure RPG that was released on the Super Famicom. And another case here that, in particular, they had... Uh, some really fantastic Super Famicom games in there, including Violinist of Hamelin, uh, the uh, Super Back to the Future 2, uh, Umihara Kawase, which I almost bought, but then uh, realized that the box was damaged and there was also uh, no manual, so I passed on that, because it was only like 50 bucks, but I, I opted out. If I'm going to get a boxed copy, I'm going to want it to be complete. Uh, and some boxed Famicom stuff here, too, including Neketsu Kakuto Densetsu. It is a 2 on 2 fighter featuring the various characters from the Kunio Kun series, aka River City Ransom, all that good stuff. Dragon Quest 3, and this is really. We just kind of want to like marvel at some of this box art. It's really, really good. Uh, Famicom and Super Famicom box art. Can never go wrong with that. And a whole bunch of GameCube games, including some Mario Party. And Mario Kart Double Dash, which is, I don't know, it's probably like my second favorite Mario Kart game. It's awesome. Kirby 64 with a blinding pink box to, uh, you, to, to look into it for too long is to uh, sear your retinas. And Wave Race 64, another absolute classic. And as you can see, that various boxed N64 games and Super Famicom games, including this... Poppin' Twinby for 1,500 yen. It's 1,650 after tax. A uh, fantastic top-down shooter uh, by Konami. If you've never played that one, I'd highly recommend picking that up. We just have so much good stuff here, including Super Bomberman 4. Yes, 4. I think there's a fifth one as well. Um, so yeah, like I said, lots of Super Bomberman games that were only released on the Super Famicom. As well as this, I believe this is... Kirby, was it Kirby Superstar or something like that, where there's a whole bunch of little Kirby games in a single uh, cartridge. And then this was an, a definite pickup, Tetris Battle Gaiden. Uh, probably my favorite Tetris game ever. One of my favorite puzzle games in general, really. And they were selling it boxed for, for next to nothing. It was really cheap. It was like, I don't know, with exchange rate, like 10 bucks or something. So I was definitely going to get that as we move on. Uh, not too much more of interest. There was a whole lot of kind of like DS, Wii stuff like that. Even some cool old Switch stuff, Wii stuff in the case. But that's not really what I'm looking for these days. Anyway, 
Uh, I did, you know, eventually go back to all the shelves, pick up a bunch of games, and we're going to go and take a look at a few of them in just a second. So let's take a little break. We'll be right back. All right, hey everybody, Jim back here at my humble abode here in Tokyo. Just got back from Oizumi Gakuen, and uh, it was a pretty good game hunt today. Um, that particular heart off wasn't quite as flush with games as I remember it being from like a few years ago. I, I could swear like a few years ago there were like way more games. Uh, but still today we picked up a lot of good stuff, a lot of quality titles. Uh, picked up about 30 games altogether today for the Famicom, Super Famicom, PS2, PS1, DS. Picked up a lot of really good stuff. Uh, final price today came out to 28,385 yen which I think for 30 games, 30 really good games, especially with the, um, the exchange rate being what it is right now, uh, I think that's pretty good. We picked up some really good stuff today and uh, I think this was a pretty fair deal. Um, so like I said, picked up about 30 games today, but I picked out three that I think are um, kind of like the finds of the day today. So uh, first up, I got a complete copy of Tetris Battle Gaiden. And this is a great game. If you're not familiar with it, it's one-on-one uh, -on -one competitive Tetris where you got a bunch of uh, wacky characters to play with. It's similar to like a Puyo Puyo game where it's one-on-one -on -one and each character, they have different special abilities that you can use to kind of like um, derail the other player's game. Uh, so it, it's very fun, it's very competitive and addictive and this is actually probably my favorite tetris game ever and even boxed like this complete with everything this was only about i want to say like 12 bucks or something uh, this was very affordable i'm really happy to find this uh, in that condition i'm um, also two loose carts but even for loose carts one they're super clean and these games are not terribly common so i picked them up for I want to say like maybe like 10 to 15 percent less than I usually see them go for. Um, first up, this is the Violinist of Hamel. Um, this is a really uh, fun, unique pla platformer made by Enix. So you play as the violinist, and you also play as his. Uh, you have a little assistant that kind of follows you around. And sort of the gimmick is you find all these like different animal suits that you can put her in to give her different abilities. And then you use that for, um, you know, to reach platforms and get around obstacles and things. There's a little bit of combat as well, but for the most part, it's more of like a tricky, almost puzzle platformer type of thing. But it's really fun, great graphics and sound. Um, this is, uh, yeah, just one of those great Super Famicom games that wasn't released outside of Japan, um, but it's awesome. So yeah, uh, Violinist of Hamon great game and then uh, this uh, another one um, just like anytime I find this if it, the price is decent I'm gonna pick it up and I think this was like maybe like 16 bucks with exchange rate uh, it's Gundam Wing Endless Duel and uh, if you're not familiar with this game it is a 2d fighter featuring all of the mechs from Gundam Wing and it's very fun it plays really well it's actually one of the better 2d fighters on the Super Famicom and in terms of like the graphics, I think this is one of the most graphically impressive games on the Super Famicom. And it has a really great soundtrack too. So like Violinist of Hamon, um, this is just a, a really amazing game um, that was just never released out, outside of Japan at the time. In fact, both this and Violinist of Hamon and Tetris Battle Gaiden, I did a video years ago, my top 10 Super Famicom games left in Japan. All three of these games are in my top 10. They're all really good, so uh, yeah, to pick this up, Gundam Wing Endless Duel, to pick this up for, you know, something like 16 bucks, however much it was after exchange rate, um, I was really happy with that. Uh, so anyway, that's it. That's the uh, game hunt for today. Those are my finds of the day again. Picked up probably about 30 games. Uh, had a good time. Um, hadn't been to Oizumi Gakuen in quite a while, so it was nice to get back there, see all those cool anime bronze statues. Actually want to go back again real soon. Um, to go to the Toei Museum there because there's the Toei Animation Studio, but there's also the museum. So I'd like to go check that out. Anyway, that's it. 
Hard Off, Game Hunt, Oyazumi Gakuen. What did you think of it? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you, and while you're at it, maybe like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. I'd surely appreciate it. And until next time, thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Goodbye.